I believe in my approach, but it's not what America wants right now. I love Arizona, and I am so proud of what we've delivered. Because I choose civility, understanding, listening, working together to get stuff done, I will leave the Senate at the end of this year. You heard that right, my friends. Senator Kirsten Sinema has announced that she is foregoing her campaign as an independent and is just choosing to retire from the Senate altogether. And as a huge fan of Senator Sinema, I've got to say I am absolutely gutted by this news because I really liked her. I thought that the way she voted down a $15 an hour minimum wage increase in such a whimsical and witty manner while fighting tooth and nail to preserve the carried interest loophole so private equity firms can pay less taxes than the workers that she voted to fuck over really showed us that you don't have to do politics in the same way. You don't have to follow tradition. She dressed up as a meth oompa loompa and found creative new ways to show her constituents how much she despised them and proved that you can have fun while fucking over working class Americans. And that's what I think is really missing from American politics. Fun. And I'm going to really miss that. I'm being sarcastic if it wasn't painfully obvious, but yeah, she's bouncing and it's because she can't win. Now, I typically don't play politician retirement videos because they're usually very cut and dry and overly robotic, but I'm going to make an exception for this one because her announcement oozes with indignation about how Americans, they're just too brain dead to appreciate her above the fray approach to politics. Let's watch. Through listening, understanding and compromise, we delivered tangible results that make America safer, stronger, and more prosperous. Yet, despite modernizing our infrastructure, ensuring clean water, delivering good jobs and safer communities, Americans still choose to retreat farther to their partisan corners. These solutions are considered failures, either because they're too much or not nearly enough. It's all or nothing. The outcome, less important than beating the other guy. The only political victories that matter these days are symbolic. Attacking your opponents on cable news or social media. Compromise is a dirty word. We've arrived at that crossroad and we chose anger and division. Actually, dumbass, people were specifically angry because your obstruction led to the sabotage of your own party's agenda. An agenda, mind you, that would have meaningfully improved the lives of a lot of working Americans. So they're right to be mad at you, and you can keep coping and seething about it all the way until you start your new job as a lobbyist in the coming months, but you're wrong. They're right. Now, in terms of what this means for that Senate seat, well, it's no longer a three-way race between her, Carrie Lake, and Ruben Gallego. Now, it is going to be just a two-way race. The reason why she's doing this, mind you, is because she was effectively pushed out of the race. So remember, she decided to become an independent only after polls showed that she couldn't survive a Democratic Party primary. Now, even as an independent, it's clear that she has no chance. Polls show that the race is going to come down to Ruben Gallego and Carrie Lake. So she's going to lose. And rather than just losing and humiliating herself further, she's choosing to bow out right here and just start her job as a lobbyist early, I'm guessing. Now, as she announced her retirement, good riddance trended on Twitter. And of course, she got ratioed to hell and people had some very interesting parting words for her. But before we get to that, you know, it's been a while since we've talked about the specific things that she did to make people despise her so much. So I want to get to that. So in a 2022 piece by Donald Shaw and David Moore for More Perfect Union, they explain how she single-handedly killed a deal that would have rolled back some of Trump's tax cuts for corporations and the wealthy. She later watered down a 15% minimum tax rate for large corporations, and she single-handedly saved the carried interest loophole and removed language from the Inflation Reduction Act that would have narrowed it. And she was then rewarded with hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations from hedge funds and private equity firms. Now, they go on to explain, quote, since killing the carried interest provision in early August, Cinema has received a rush of donations from individuals employed by private equity, hedge fund and venture capital firms. Shocker. In total, Sludge identified more than 120 donations to Cinema's joint fundraising committee or to her campaign or PAC that were from donors and investment industries that benefit from they carried interest loophole and were given after she killed the provision on August 4th. Yeah. And if we lived in a just society, we would jail politicians for this level of corruption. But thankfully for her, all of this is perfectly legal 
thanks to our corrupt campaign finance system that allows corporations to literally buy off politicians. And if you're wondering why Congress never passes policies that you want, well, it's because you're not as rich as a multinational corporation and foreign lobbying firm. So until you get that rich and buy off your own politician, you're not going to get what you want unless your interests align with their interests, which they don't because they have very specific things that they want passed. But on top of her brazen corruption, she refused to let bills pass with a simple majority using reconciliation and wouldn't even make exceptions to the filibuster to protect abortion and voting rights, even though she claims that she cares deeply about abortion rights and voting rights. But according to her, you know, you're just too dumb to understand her high minded politics of compromise. Yeah. Well, the people told her what they think about that, i.e. they roasted the shit out of her after she made this announcement. Here's some responses. Bye, Felicia. Best decision you've ever made in years. Let's go, Ruben Gallego. Finally got offered that lobbying job, huh? Shameless private equity shill. Thankfully, the country is finally rid of her. Thank God you suck. So glad you'll be out of government. You're a horrible human. I made over 2,000 phone calls to get you elected and you betrayed us. Goodbye, you won't be missed. Don't let the door hit you. Kirsten Sinema will go down in history as a feckless, corrupt egomaniac who sabotaged abortion and voting rights and destroyed her own political career in the process. Enjoy your lobbying gig and leave the rest of us alone forever. Instead of this, the public doesn't want my wise counsel anymore stuff, she could have just said the private equity job offer came through. And my favorite, stepping down to spend more time with her private equity. <laughs> Matt Stoller wins my favorite comment here. So this announcement is perhaps the one thing that she's done throughout her entire political career that has made people happy. And the very last thing that I'll say about her as a senator is that I hope she reads all of these comments and I hope that they hurt her feelings because she deserves it since she is a very bad person. Now, another thing that is worth pointing out is that Manchin like her, was also forced into retirement after doing so much to make themselves incredibly despised by the American population. And Jeet here on Twitter made a really good point about how Fetterman should see these these examples and pay attention, because if he decides to turn into Kirsten Cinema 2.0 with his constant attacks on the left and cheerleading for genocide, that's not going to bode well for his career if he plans to be a senator for more than one term. But in conclusion, comment down below and uh, tell me which private equity firm you think that Kirsten Cinema is going to get a job at. My guess is Bain Capital, but I'm curious to know what your guess is.